Welcome back to Federal Insights, empowering the federal workforce to make better, faster decisions that improve the effectiveness of government, sponsored by Click here on Federal News Network. My guests today are Joe DeSantos, the Chief Data Officer at Click Technologies, and Andrew Churchill, the Vice President of Federal at Click. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. And before the break, we were talking about shared services, data pipelines, access to data. Roll up all this together for us to give us a picture of what a modern data architecture and access system should look like. Joe? Well, so one of the things that, uh, you know, if you kind of think about this from a uh, supply chain point of view, um, you know, one of the things that retail establishments have all figured out is how do I get the right end product to the right person? Part one is, does it really matter when you go on to Amazon? Do you care whether it's coming from Minnesota or Chicago? Not really. You, you want to know that you have this material. What becomes important to you is the attributes of those. Can you actually trust that the thing that you're looking at has the right size, the right shape, the right dimension, the right quality metrics? Have people given it four stars, et cetera? And so in many respects, what the pipeline is should really copy that experience. Do we have trust in the product that we're getting? Do we know where it's coming from? Who actually produced this data set? And what process did it get through to get to me? And so a modern data pipeline starts off with the principle of us having trust and speed of access and really goes through now much more real-time streaming. Uh, there's a, a lot more emphasis on, on building pipelines that, that make real-time connections with this idea that embedded governance so that we can trust the output on the other side. All right, Andrew? Yeah, I, it's... Uh... You know, the, the, the process that uh, folks have been going through uh, has really been, you know, brought into the, the spotlight with, uh, with COVID. You know, it's the, the demand for more real time, uh, for more agility to, to accommodate the, the, the questions that they suddenly realized they needed to be able to ask has been brought into focus. Uh, much of the process has been automated, but still so much is left in a uh, a manual fashion. It creates delays. And, you know, sort of that's what we're working through right now. Uh, how do I begin to work through policy and, and the, the people in the politics to be able to uh, make sure that the systems of record that are needed in order to inform these decisions actually open their doors into these uh, larger data environments? And, you know, that's uh, partially, that even goes back to what we were talking about around data literacy. So there, you know, have been several initiatives over the last two years where top leaders, uh, the, the uh, you know, Secretary of the Army, uh, the you know, Joint Chiefs, have said, "Hey, data, it belongs to the mission. It doesn't belong to you and the system." So we're working through that process, but. That is, uh, you know, if you look at the DOD data strategy, they're building this enterprise data catalog. Uh, you know, while uh, they may have made, made a similar attempt to build a catalog before, here they're taking these types of modern approaches that are going to sit there and say, like Joe said, it doesn't matter where it's coming from. I just need to know what it is, need to have some provenance on that data, and then I can bring it forward to that point of decision. Uh, I ultimately look at what these pipelines are. How do I remove friction from the process? Because if I am a senior leader and my goal is to make the best possible decision that will affect change, you know, save lives, improve safety, uh, get me the data in the, you know, with the lowest latency right when I need it and, and give me that confidence to know that if I make a decision off it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working from, uh, from the best sheet of music we have. And Joe, I've got a double question for you. One, it's one thing to have velocity of data traveling through your pipelines, but what people really want at the decision level is a fast decision-making ability. Maybe mm. comment on that. And the other issue is with all this data pipeline and flowing of data from the original source, if the repository is in the cloud, what about the issue of data extraction expenses that go with cloud? Because you know, as we get away from expensive data lakes and all of this storage and hierarchy architecture. People don't want to replace it with a cost of extracting data and putting it back over and over again in the cloud. Yeah, let's take those questions in, in reverse order. I think that you're onto a really important point with the idea of cloud being consumption-based. You know, so we're, there's always a pressure point in, uh, in IT. Sometimes it shifts from compute to storage, and now we're back to the compute. You know? uh, and so you know, what I would say is, Every single, every single organization needs to figure out how best to optimize the pipeline for cost. What I would say is the best thing I can think about is an idea of reusable assets. 
right? So if you think about, I'll give you a metaphor. You know, so if you were going to buy, uh, if, if you were going to buy a shed, you might go down to a, a home improvement store and say, I don't really like any of these. I'm going to build my own. What would you want? You'd want a whole bunch of two by fours. You'd want a whole bunch of nails and you'd want all these things that would help you build that faster. And you know what? Somebody tomorrow comes to the store and they don't want a shed. They want a house. They want a dog house or whatever. And they're able to use those same assets. So repeatability, reusability of the same assets in the same pipeline is really important for the idea of cost. You don't want to send a gazillion things through that same pipeline that are all largely copies of each other. So the kind of a, a, almost an obsessive focus on semi-finished goods, right? Building semi-finished goods. Now, what that does when you do that is it puts a premium on your first point, which is how in the world can you expect people to get from this idea of semi-finished to decision, right? And I think that what we're going to start to see is this idea of, um, of recipes, right? So, you know, how do we get from a, an ability to, to create data? Well, think about your personal life. If you want to know something, you Google it. You, you get some data and you put it to work. You, you, might, uh, you might have the ability to access, you know, some newspaper online, right? And you yourself are processing that information. There's largely a series of facts. That's what data literacy is so important about. We need to start training people to understand and trust these raw materials and put them to use with, with repeatable recipes that help them make drive decisions. And I think that you need to have some kind of things, some constructs set up, up front that say, how do you think, think about certain thresholds that will be met? Those thresholds will start to drive certain behavior. Now you'll notice, I didn't talk about a dashboard. I didn't talk about dissemination of information in the chart. It's about the information speaking to you, driving action, something that might be interactive with you. You talk to it, it talks back. That's where we're headed, that the, that the human being has some obligation for knowing what to do with the data and is able to interact with it in a really flexible kind of way. And Andrew, do you find agencies get that idea because you hear so much about, let's build a dashboard, you know, let's yeah. build a repository and so on? Yeah, and well, I, I I think they do. They've 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 talked. They've begun to think about that that end product as as something that will naturally come, and they've begin to solve and focus most of their uh, problem on solving for those 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 obstacles that have uh, tended to exist. Um, you know, those cloud elements are certainly what's accelerating uh, the you know sort of the access to data. We're seeing you know more and more. Uh, enterprise applications that are sitting on, you know, COBOL uh, mainframe applications being retired and being rebuilt and deployed in the cloud. Um, you know, they're, they, they, the most important thing that they do is that they don't recreate some of, uh, of the sort of approaches that led to those legacy systems being almost impossible to say goodbye to. Uh, by recreating them in these these modern approaches, so with you know the, the next generation of computing really being one that will be about agility, change, and and innovation, uh, one of the things that I think you know what uh, this concept of pipelines that Joe's Joe's speaking to is that you know while I may be delivering my data to this dashboard or this particular data lake uh, in AWS today. Uh, the, the, the next great thing may be coming from, you know, Microsoft and Azure or some un, un, unknown to us today vendor. Uh, and how do I now redirect, redirect all of that important work that I did about creating structure around this data, improving it, uh, and, and making sure that, that uh, again, the innovation is what matters. So, you know, I think that's, you know, one of the, the big themes. As you, as we move ahead, um, you know, we, you know, our our CEO believes uh, wholeheartedly that dashboards are are going to be the the least important thing that even our analytics tier supports. That you know, analytics will become something that again is almost omnipresent across all of the different types of business systems and and capabilities that we interact with. And in many ways, it sounds like what you've both been talking about is data operations. That is to say, to go along with the idea of development operations, DevOps, that's become so current. And so to get to that date ops, let's call it, Joe, what do agencies need to do right now in order to get to that nirvana where they have a real data operations and rapid decision-making? So you're onto a really important uh, principle that's starting to emerge in, in data operations. And uh, in some respects, it follows some of the same principles. And I'm gonna start with one that might not be obvious, which is failing fast. You know, a lot of times what we really want to do in, in development is kind of try something out and try something out. And data is no different. And so one of the things that sometimes it takes some work to agree upon the words that you mean and to get a sense of that. 
And what we're starting to see is, uh, you know, in, in our organization, we're really putting a premium on data discovery. Help me figure out something fast. Help me get to some minimum viable product. And then what starts to kick in is how do I actually now need to, I need, this is great. How do, I, how do I productionalize this? And how do I make this algorithmic score or this output or this dashboard available all the time and turn it on? And that's where the kind of DevOps principle of promotion and really rapidly making it available, cycle, 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 deploy, cycle, 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 deploy. And uh, that's a really important concept, especially if you're starting to really deal with, you know, with, with reusable assets and getting people into hands, you can really make people self-sufficient by this idea of really trying to speed up the time to value of insights. All right. And in the minute we have left, Andrew, what about uh, that legacy data? Can that be harvested from maybe the old code that you're retiring? Because that data still might be useful, even if only to train a new algorithm. Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, data operations uh, is, is more so about creating a process. And if that process incorporates uh, a calling out to a script that executes practically anywhere uh, because it's efficient and because it's able to be uh, you know, leveraged quickly to, to, to deliver an outcome that I think that's exactly what the, you know, what we're, we're looking at here. Um, you know, the, the idea here is get faster, deliver the result. All right. Lots to think about. I want to thank Joe DeSantos, the chief data officer at Click Technologies and Andrew Churchill, the vice president of federal at Click. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thanks, Tom. And I'm Tom Temin. You've been listening to Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, please visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Analytics in Government.